Hey you guys, this is Mr. Mellings and in this video we are going to learn how to calculate the molar masses of different compounds and molecules and atoms. Now in an earlier video we talked about the mole and Avogadro's number and you learned about the relationship between those two. And in this video we are going to learn how to calculate the molar mass. We're going to take it a step further. Okay, so here's how it works. The molar mass of a substance is the mass in grams of one mole of that substance and molar masses are typically measured in the units grams per mole or grams per mole abbreviated right here so to calculate the molar mass of a substance it's easy you will need a periodic table of elements so whenever you're asked to calculate the molar mass of a substance go ahead and break out your periodic table so what is molar mass and how does it work well let's suppose we have some glucose or some sugar in this case, it's glucose, and its chemical formula is C6H12O6. One molecule of this glucose here consists of six atoms of carbon, 12 atoms of hydrogen, and six atoms of oxygen. Okay, so let's suppose we have one mole of glucose molecules. If we have one mole of glucose molecules, then we will have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of glucose. And let's suppose we put one mole of glucose onto this little scale right here and take its mass. Well, its mass will be 180.155 grams of C6H12O6. But what if you didn't have a digital scale right here? What if you didn't have any scale at all to measure its mass? How could we calculate uh, by using uh, the numbers? How can we calculate what the molar mass of glucose is? Well, if we have a periodic table, we can easily do that. And in this video, we are going to learn how to calculate the molar masses of several different substances. And then you'll try some on your own at the end. But it's important to understand the concept between the mole, the amount of molecules or atoms, and the mass, okay? And so that's what molar mass does. It ties together this concept of the mole, Avogadro's number, and the mass of that atom or of that compound or of that molecule. So let's jump right in and take a look at a few examples. All right, so how do you calculate molar mass? Well, it says right here, to calculate the molar mass of a compound, we simply multiply the number of each different element in the compound by its molar mass from the periodic table of elements and then simply add up those values, okay? So if we take a look here, we have glucose like in the previous uh, slide we just talked about. And the chemical formula for glucose is C6H12O6, okay? So how can we calculate the the molar mass of glucose. Well, we must break this down. What three elements make up glucose? Well, if we take a look right here, glucose has got carbon, it's got hydrogen, and it's got oxygen in it. And if we take a look further, it looks like six atoms of carbon are in one molecule of glucose. There are 12 atoms of hydrogen in one molecule of glucose, and there are six atoms of oxygen in one molecule of glucose. What we will do now is we will multiply this by the molar mass of carbon from our periodic table of elements. And if we take a look right here, the molar mass of carbon is going to be 12.011. The molar mass of hydrogen is going to be, let's take a look, 1.0079. The molar mass of oxygen, if we take a look, is 15.999. And so now we put this into our calculators, okay? So we put this into our calculators, and we will get 72.066 for carbon when we take 12 times 1.0079. We will end up with 12.0948. And when we take 6 times 15.999, we will end up with 95.994. Okay, so if you take a look, what we did is we broke this molecule down into the three elements that make it up. There are six carbons, there are 12 hydrogens, there are six oxygens. And what we did then is we looked on our periodic table 
to get these values right here. For carbon, it's 12.011. For hydrogen, it's 1.0079. And for oxygen, if you take a look, it's 15.999. These are the molar masses of a single atom uh, of carbon, of hydrogen, and oxygen. So now that we have these three values right here, all we need to do is we simply add these three values up and we of course keep the rules of significant figures in mind when we're adding these up and we will end up with 180.155 and what unit goes on the molar mass well grams per mole okay so what does this answer mean this means if you have one mole of glucose you're going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of glucose. And all those molecules of glucose are going to have a mass of 180.55 grams. Okay, so let's try a few more problems. And then you can go ahead and try a few problems on your own and check your answers at the end of this video. Right, so let's start off with an easy one. We have to calculate the molar mass of NaCl or sodium chloride. If we take a look, there are two atoms that make up sodium chloride, sodium and chlorine. And if we take a look, there's only a subscript of 1 here for sodium, and there's only a subscript of 1 here for chlorine, right? Now we take a look at our periodic table of elements, and we'll see that sodium has a mass of 22.989. And we'll end up with 22.989. If we take a look at chlorine, we end up with, uh, let's see, where's chlorine? Here it is, 35.453. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add these two numbers up and we're going to end up with 58.442 grams per mole. Okay, so if we have one mole of sodium chloride, it will have a mass of 58.442 grams. Let's take another look or let's take a look at another example. All right, let's take a look at water, H2O. If we take a look, water is made up of hydrogen and it's made up of oxygen. And if we take a look at a water molecule, there are two atoms of hydrogen and there is only one atom of oxygen. Turn to our periodic table for hydrogen and we'll see that right here it says 1.0079. Right here for oxygen, we see it's 15.999. We'll put this in our calculator here and we will end up with, let's take a look here. 2.0158 we'll put this in our calculator actually we don't need to it's just 15.999 and now we're going to add these two numbers together and we're going to end up with 18.015 18.015 if we keep the rules of significant figures right so one mole of water molecules is going to consist of 602 hexillion or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water and that many water molecules are going to have a mass of 18.015 grams if you put that on a scale let's take a look at another example all right so we have calcium phosphate right we have to write uh, or we have to determine what the molar mass of calcium phosphate is. Okay, so we have calcium phosphate. If we break it down, this is made up of calcium, it's made up of phosphorus, and it's made up of oxygen. If we take a look, there are three calciums. There's going to be two phosphorus, and there's going to be two times four is eight oxygens, right, that make up this, this compound calcium phosphate. If we take a look on our periodic table of elements, calcium's molar mass is 40.078. If we take a look at phosphorus, the molar mass of phosphorus is 30.974. If we take a look at oxygen, the molar mass of oxygen is going to be 15.999. And so now we can put these values into our calculator and we'll take 3 times 40.078 and we get 120.234. We'll take 2 times 30.974 and we'll get 61.948 and we'll take 8 times 15.999 and we'll get 127.992 
what do we do with these three numbers here? We're going to add these all together and we will get a grand total of 61.948 plus 120.234 and we will end up with 310.174 grams per mole. All right, so if you have one mole of calcium phosphate, you're going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd units of calcium phosphate and they will all have a mass of 310.174 grams. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, so here we go. What if you're given just 10,4 chlorate? So you're given just the name and you're not given the chemical formula. Well, in an earlier video, we learned how to write the chemical formulas for these different compounds. So 10,4, you know 10 is SN. This 4 means that there's a 4 plus charge. And we have chlorate. That's a polyatomic ion that you had to memorize and it has a negative 1 charge or simply minus charge. These two ionic charges don't add up to 0. So you're going to need four chlorates. So our chemical formula is SnClO34. If we break this down now, this compound is made up of three elements. It's made up of tin, it's made up of chlorine, and it's made up of oxygen. If we take a look, there's only one tin atom. If we take a look, there are four chlorines. And if we take a look, there are four times three is 12 oxygens. If we look on our periodic table under tin, we see it's 118.710. That's its molar mass. If we take a look at chlorine, we'll see that it's 35.453. And if we take a look at oxygen, we can see that it's 15.999. And you'll start to memorize some of these. Whoops, this should be a 9. You'll start to memorize these as you go along. So now we get our calculator out. This is going to be 118.710. This is going to end up being, let's see here, 141.812 and this will end up being 191.988 what do we do with these three values now we're gonna add these three values together And we're going to end up with 452.51 grams per mole. Okay, 452.51. So if you have one mole of tin 4 chlorate, it's going to consist of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd units of tin 4 chlorate. And that many units of tin 4 chlorate will have a mass of, you guessed it, 452.51 grams. All right, so that's how you calculate the molar mass. So try these problems out on your own. Go ahead and pause this video at this point and see if you can work through these problems on your own. Take a few moments to uh, take five or ten minutes to try these out. Get your periodic table out, get a, get a calculator out, and try these problems on your own. Okay, I'm going to give you the answers to these right now. Bam! How did you do? If you got these all correct, then you understand the concept of molar mass. You understand how to calculate the molar masses of different uh, compounds. And uh, if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner. That will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.